The proof of Gödel's completeness theorem given by Kurt Gödel in his doctoral dissertation of 1929 and a rewritten version of the dissertation, published as an article in 1930 is not easy to read today, it uses concepts and formalism that are no longer used and terminology that is often obscure. The version given below attempts to represent all the steps in the proof and all the important ideas faithfully, while restating the proof in the modern language of mathematical logic. This outline should not be considered a rigorous proof of the theorem. Topic: <laughs> Assumptions. We work with first-order predicate calculus. Our languages allow constant, function and relation symbols. Structures consist of non-empty domains and interpretations of the relevant symbols as constant members, functions or relations over that domain. We assume classical logic as opposed to intuitionistic logic for example. We fix some axiomatization i.e. a syntax-based, machine-manageable proof system of the predicate calculus, logical axioms and rules of inference. Any of the several well-known equivalent axiomatizations will do. Gödel's original proof assumed the Hilbert-Ackermann proof system. We assume without proof all the basic well-known results about our formalism that we need, such as the normal form theorem or the soundness theorem. We axiomatize predicate calculus without equality sometimes confusingly called without identity, i.e. there are no special axioms expressing the properties of object equality as a special relation symbol. After the basic form of the theorem has been proved, it will be easy to extend it to the case of predicate calculus with equality. Topic: <laughs> Statement of the theorem and its proof. In the following, we state two equivalent forms of the theorem and show their equivalence. Later, we prove the theorem. This is done in the following steps. Reducing the theorem to sentences formulas with no free variables in prenix form, i.e. with all quantifiers and at the beginning. Furthermore, we reduce it to formulas whose first quantifier is. This is possible because for every sentence, there is an equivalent one in prenix form whose first quantifier is. Reducing the theorem to sentences of the form x1 x2 xk y1 y2 ym5 x1 less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 xk y1 less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 m while we cannot do this by simply rearranging the quantifiers, we show that it is yet enough to prove the theorem for sentences of that form. Finally we prove the theorem for sentences of that form. This is done by first noting that a sentence such as b equals x1 x2 x k y1 y2 y m5 x1 less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 x k y one less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 m is either refutable its negation is always true or satisfiable i.e. there is some model in which it holds it might even be always true i.e. a tautology this model is simply assigning truth values to the subpropositions from which b is built the reason for that is the completeness of propositional logic, with the existential quantifiers playing no role. We extend this result to more and more complex and lengthy sentences, dn n equals 1, 2 
built out from B, so that either any of them is refutable and therefore so is phi, or all of them are not refutable and therefore each holds in some model. We finally use the models in which the dn hold in case all are not refutable in order to build a model in which phi holds. Topic theorem 1. Every valid formula true in all structures is provable. This is the most basic form of the completeness theorem. We immediately restate it in a form more convenient for our purposes. When we say all structures, it is important to specify that the structures involved are classical Tarskian interpretations I, where I equals U is a non-empty possibly infinite set of objects, whereas F is a set of functions from expressions of the interpreted symbolism into U. By contrast, so-called free logics countenance possibly empty sets for U for more regarding free logics, see the work of Carol Lambert. Topic. Theorem 2. Every formula phi is either refutable or satisfiable in some structure. Phi is refutable. Means by definition. Phi is provable. Topic. Equivalence of both theorems To see the equivalence, note first that if theorem 1 holds, and phi is not satisfiable in any structure, then phi is valid in all structures and therefore provable, thus phi is refutable and theorem 2 holds. If on the other hand theorem 2 holds and phi is valid in all structures, then phi is not satisfiable in any structure and therefore refutable, then phi is provable and then so is phi, thus theorem 1 holds. Topic. Proof of theorem 2 first step. We approach the proof of theorem 2 by successively restricting the class of all formulas phi for which we need to prove phi is either refutable or satisfiable. At the beginning we need to prove this for all possible formulas phi in our language. However, suppose that for every formula phi there is some formula psi taken from a more restricted class of formulas c, such that Psi is either refutable or satisfiable. Phi is either refutable or satisfiable. Then, once this claim expressed in the previous sentence is proved, it will suffice to prove phi is either refutable or satisfiable. Only for phi s belonging to the class C note also that if phi is provably equivalent to psi, i.e., phi psi is provable, then it is indeed the case that psi is either refutable or satisfiable. Phi is either refutable or satisfiable. The soundness theorem is needed to show this. There are standard techniques for rewriting an arbitrary formula into one that does not use function or constant symbols, at the cost of introducing additional quantifiers, we will therefore assume that all formulas are free of such symbols. Gödel's paper uses a version of first-order predicate calculus that has no function or constant symbols to begin with. Next we consider a generic formula phi which no longer uses function or constant symbols and apply the Prenix form theorem to find a formula psi in normal form such that phi psi psi being in normal form means that all the quantifiers in psi, if there are any, are found at the very beginning of psi. It follows now that we need only prove theorem 2 for formulas phi in normal form. Next, we eliminate all free variables from phi by quantifying them existentially. If, say, x1 less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 xn are free in phi, we form psi equals x1 x n 
phi display style psi equals exists x underscore one exists x underscore n phi if psi is satisfiable in a structure m then certainly so is phi and if psi is refutable then psi equals x 1 x n phi display style neg psi equals for all x underscore 1 for all x underscore n neg phi is provable, and then so is phi, thus phi is refutable. We see that we can restrict phi to be a sentence, that is, a formula with no free variables. Finally, we would like, for reasons of technical convenience, that the prefix of phi that is, the string of quantifiers at the beginning of phi, which is in normal form begin with a universal quantifier and end with an existential quantifier. To achieve this for a generic phi subject to restrictions we have already proved, we take some one-place relation symbol f unused in phi, and two new variables y and z. If phi equals p phi, where p stands for the prefix of phi and phi for the matrix the remaining, quantifier-free part of phi we form psi equals y p z phi f y f z Display style psi equals for all y p exists z phi wedge f y v neg f z. Since y z f y f z display style for all y exists z f y v neg f z is clearly provable it is easy to see that phi equals psi display style phi equals psi is provable topic reducing the theorem to formulas of degree 1 Our generic formula phi now is a sentence, in normal form, and its prefix starts with a universal quantifier and ends with an existential quantifier. Let us call the class of all such formulas R. We are faced with proving that every formula in R is either refutable or satisfiable. Given our formula phi, we group strings of quantifiers of one kind together in blocks, Phi equals x one x k one x k one plus one x k two x k n minus 2 plus 1 x k n minus 1 x k n minus 1 plus 1 x k in phi display style phi equals for all x underscore one for all x underscore k underscore one exists x underscore k underscore one plus one exists x underscore k underscore two for all x underscore k underscore n two plus one 
for all x underscore k underscore n one exists x underscore k underscore n one plus one exists x underscore k underscore n phi. We define the degree of phi display style phi to be the number of universal quantifier blocks separated by existential quantifier blocks as shown above in the prefix of phi display style phi the following lemma which Gödel adapted from Skolem's proof of the lowenheim skolem theorem lets us sharply reduce the complexity of the generic formula phi display style phi we need to prove the theorem for lemma let k greater than equals 1 if every formula in r of degree k is either refutable or satisfiable then so is every formula in r of degree k plus 1 comment take a formula phi of degree k plus 1 of the form phi equals x y u v p psi display style phi equals for all x exists y for all u exists v p psi where p psi display style p psi is the remainder of phi display style phi it is thus of degree k1. Phi states that for every x there is a y such that something. It would have been nice to have a predicate q so that for every x, q, x, y would be true if and only if y is the required one to make something true. Then we could have written a formula of degree k, which is equivalent to phi, namely x x y u v y p q x y q x y psi Display style for all x for all x for all y for all u exists v exists y p q x y wedge q x y right arrow psi. This formula is indeed equivalent to phi because it states that for every x, if there is a y that satisfies q x y, then something holds. And furthermore, we know that there is such a y because for every x, there is a y that satisfies q x y. Therefore, phi follows from this formula. It is also easy to show that if the formula is false, then so is phi. Unfortunately, in general there is no such predicate Q. However, this idea can be understood as a basis for the following proof of the lemma – proof. Let phi be a formula of degree k plus 1, then we can write it as phi equals x y u v p Psi display style phi equals for all x exists y for all u exists v p psi where p is the remainder of the prefix of phi display style phi it is thus of degree k one and psi display style psi is the quantifier free matrix of phi display style phi x y u and v denote here tuples of variables rather than single variables e g x display style for all x really stands for x 1 x 2 x n 
Display style for all x underscore one for all x underscore two for all x underscore n where x one x n display style x underscore one x underscore n are some distinct variables. Let now x and y be tuples of previously unused variables of the same length as x and y respectively, and let q be a previously unused relation symbol that takes as many arguments as the sum of lengths of x and y. We consider the formula phi equals x y q x y x y q x y u v p psi Display style phi equals for all x exists y q x y wedge for all x for all y q x y right arrow for all u exists v p psi clearly phi phi display style phi right arrow phi is provable now since the string of quantifiers u v p display style for all u exists v p does not contain variables from x or y, the following equivalence is easily provable with the help of whatever formalism we're using q x y u v p psi u v p q x Y psi display style q x y right arrow for all u exists v p psi a quiv for all u exists v p q x y right arrow psi. And since these two formulas are equivalent, if we replace the first with the second inside phi, we obtain the formula phi such that phi 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 equals x y q x y x y u v p q x y psi Display style phi equals for all x exists y q x y wedge for all x for all y for all u exists v p q x y right arrow psi. Now phi has the form s rho s rho display style s rho wedge s rho where s and s are some quantifier strings, rho and rho are quantifier free, and furthermore, no variable of s occurs in rho and no variable of s occurs in rho. Under such conditions, every formula of the form t rho rho display style t rho wedge rho where t is a string of quantifiers containing all quantifiers in s and s interleaved among themselves in any fashion, but maintaining the relative order inside s and s, will be equivalent to the original formula phi this is yet another basic result in first-order predicate calculus that we rely on. To wit, we form psi as follows psi equals x x y u y v 
P Q X Y Q X Y Psi Display style psi equals for all x for all x for all y for all u exists y exists v p q x y wedge q x y right arrow psi, and we have phi psi display style phi equiv psi. Now psi. Display style psi is a formula of degree k and therefore by assumption either refutable or satisfiable. If psi display style psi is satisfiable in a structure M, then considering psi phi 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 Display style psi equiv phi equiv phi wedge phi right arrow phi. We see that phi display style phi is satisfiable as well. If psi display style psi is refutable, then so as phi. Display style phi, which is equivalent to it, thus phi. Display style neg phi is provable. Now we can replace all occurrences of Q inside the provable formula. Phi. Display style neg phi by some other formula dependent on the same variables, and we will still get a provable formula. This is yet another basic result of first-order predicate calculus. Depending on the particular formalism adopted for the calculus, it may be seen as a simple application of a functional substitution rule of inference, as in Gödel's paper, or it may be proved by considering the formal proof of Phi display style neg phi replacing in it all occurrences of Q by some other formula with the same free variables, and noting that all logical axioms in the formal proof remain logical axioms after the substitution, and all rules of inference still apply in the same way. In this particular case, we replace Q x y in phi. Display style neg phi with the formula U V P psi x y x y display style for all U exists V P psi x y x y here x y x y means that instead of psi we are writing a different formula in which x and y are replaced with x and y note that q x y is simply replaced by u v p psi display style for all u exists v p psi phi display style neg phi then becomes x y u v p psi x y x y x y u v P Psi U V P Psi 
Display style neg for all x exists y for all u exists v p psi x y x y wedge for all x for all y for all u exists v p psi right arrow for all u exists v p psi and this formula is provable since the part under negation and after the display style wedge sign is obviously provable and the part under negation and before the display style wedge sign is obviously phi just with x and y replaced by x and y we see that phi display style neg phi is provable, and phi is refutable. We have proved that phi is either satisfiable or refutable, and this concludes the proof of the lemma. Notice that we could not have used u v p psi x y x y Display style for all u exists v p psi x y x y instead of q x y from the beginning because psi display style psi would not have been a well formed formula in that case. This is why we cannot naively use the argument appearing at the comment that precedes the proof. Topic proving the theorem for formulas of degree 1 as shown by the lemma above, we only need to prove our theorem for formulas phi in R of degree 1, phi cannot be of degree 0, since formulas in R have no free variables and don't use constant symbols. So the formula phi has the general form, x1, xk, y1, ym, phi x1, xk, y1, ym, display style, for all x underscore 1, x underscore k exists y underscore 1, y underscore m, phi x underscore 1, x underscore k, y underscore 1, y underscore m. Now we define an ordering of the k tuples of natural natural numbers as follows x1 xk y1 yk display style x underscore 1 x underscore k y underscore k should hold if either sigma k x1 xk sigma k y1 yk display style sigma underscore k x underscore 1 x underscore k y underscore k or sigma k x1 xk equals sigma k y1 yk display style sigma underscore K x underscore 1 X underscore K equals Sigma underscore K y underscore 1 y underscore K and X 1 X K display style X underscore 1 X underscore K proceeds y 1 y K display style y underscore one y underscore k in lexicographic order. Here sigma k x one x k display style sigma underscore k x underscore one X underscore K denotes the sum of the terms of the tuple, denote the nth tuple in this order by a one N A K N display style a underscore one carrot N A underscore K carrot N set the formula B in display style B underscore in as phi Z a one n 
Z A K N Z N minus one M plus two Z N minus one M plus three Z N M plus one Display style phi Z underscore a underscore one carrot N Z underscore a underscore K carrot N Z underscore N one M plus two Z underscore N one M plus three Z underscore N M plus one then put D N display style D underscore N as Z one Z N M plus one B one B two B N display style exists Z underscore one Z underscore N M plus one B underscore one wedge B underscore two wedge B underscore N Lemma for every N Phi D N display style right arrow D underscore N Proof by induction on N, we have D K D K minus one Z one Z N minus one M plus one Z N minus one M plus two Z N M plus one B N D K minus one Z a one N Z A K N Y one Y M Phi Z A one N Z A K N Y one Y M Display style D underscore K left arrow D underscore K one wedge for all Z underscore one Z underscore N one M plus one exists Z underscore N one M plus two Z underscore N M plus one B underscore N left arrow D underscore K one wedge for all Z underscore a underscore one carrot N Z underscore a underscore K carrot N exists Y underscore one Y underscore M Phi Z underscore a underscore one carrot N Z underscore a underscore K carrot N Y underscore one Y underscore M where the latter implication holds by variable substitution, since the ordering of the tuples is such that K A one N A K N N minus one M plus two Display style for all K A underscore one carrot N A underscore K carrot N 
but the last formula is equivalent to d k minus one. Display style d underscore k one wedge phi. For the base case, d one z one z m plus one phi z a one one z a k one z two z three z m plus one z one z m plus one phi z one z one z two z three z m plus one Display style D underscore one equiv exists Z underscore one Z underscore M plus one Phi Z underscore a underscore one carrot one Z underscore a underscore K carrot one Z underscore two Z underscore three Z underscore M plus one equiv exists Z underscore one Z underscore M plus one Phi Z underscore one Z underscore one Z underscore two Z underscore three Z underscore M plus one is obviously a corollary of Phi as well. So the lemma is proven. Now if D N display style D underscore N is refutable for some N, it follows that phi is refutable. On the other hand, suppose that D N display style D underscore N is not refutable for any N. Then for each n there is some way of assigning truth values to the distinct subpropositions e h display style e underscore h ordered by their first appearance in d n display style d underscore n distinct here means either distinct predicates or distinct bound variables in B K display style B underscore K such that D N display style D underscore N will be true when each proposition is evaluated in this fashion. This follows from the completeness of the underlying propositional logic. We will now show that there is such an assignment of truth values to E H display style E underscore H so that all D N display style D underscore N will be true that E H display style e underscore h appear in the same order in every d n display style d underscore n. We will inductively define a general assignment to them by a sort of majority vote, since there are infinitely many assignments, one for each d n. Display style D underscore N affecting E one Display style E underscore one either infinitely many make E one Display style E underscore one true, or infinitely many make it false and only finitely many make it true. In the former case, we choose 
E one Display style E underscore one to be true in general, in the latter we take it to be false in general. Then from the infinitely many n for which e 1 display style e underscore 1 through e h minus 1 display style e underscore h 1 Air assign the same truth value as in the general assignment. We pick a general assignment to E H display style E underscore H in the same fashion. This general assignment must lead to every one of the B K display style B underscore K and D K display style D underscore K being true, since if one of the B K display style B underscore K were false under the general assignment D N display style D underscore N would also be false for every n greater than k. But this contradicts the fact that for the finite collection of general e h e h assignments appearing in d k d k there are infinitely many n where the assignment making d n display style d underscore n true matches the general assignment. From this general assignment, which makes all of the d k display style d underscore k true we construct an interpretation of the language's predicates that makes phi true the universe of the model will be the natural numbers each i airy predicate psi display style psi should be true of the naturals u 1 u i Display style U underscore one U underscore I precisely when the proposition Psi Z U one Z U I Display style Psi Z underscore U underscore one Z underscore U underscore I is either true in the general assignment or not assigned by it because it never appears in any of the D K display style D underscore K. In this model, each of the formulas Y one Y M phi a one N A K N Y one Y M Display style exists Y underscore one Y underscore M Phi a underscore one carrot N a underscore K carrot N Y underscore one Y underscore M is true by construction. But this implies that Phi itself is true in the model, since the A N display style a carrot N range over all possible K tuples of natural numbers. So phi is satisfiable, and we are done. Topic: Intuitive explanation. 
we may write each by as phi x1 less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 x k y1 less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 m for some xs which we may call first arguments and ys that we may call last arguments take b1 for example its last arguments are z2 z3 less than pre greater than slash pre greater than dot 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 zm plus 1 and for every possible combination of k of these variables there is some j so that they appear as first arguments in bj thus for large enough n1 dn1 has the property that the last arguments of b1 appear in every possible combinations of k of them as first arguments in other bjs within dn for every by there is a dni with the corresponding property Therefore in a model that satisfies all the division S, there are objects corresponding to Z1, Z2, and each combination of K of these appear as first arguments in some BJ, meaning that for every K of these objects ZP1. ZPK there are ZQ1. Dot ZQM, which makes phi ZP1. Dot ZPK, ZQ1. Dot ZQM satisfied. By taking a submodel with only these Z1, Z2 objects, we have a model satisfying phi. Topic. Extensions Topic Extension to first order predicate calculus with equality Gödel reduced a formula containing instances of the equality predicate to ones without it in an extended language his method involves replacing a formula phi containing some instances of equality with the formula x e q x x x y z e q x y e q X Z E Q Y Z Display style for all x e q x x wedge for all x y z e q x y right arrow e q x z right arrow e q y z x y z E Q X Y E Q Z X E Q Z Y Display style wedge for all x y z e q x y right arrow e q z x right arrow e q z y display style wedge x one x k y one x k e Q X one Y one E Q X K Y K A X one X K A Y one 
y k display style for all x underscore one x underscore k y underscore one x underscore k e q x underscore one y underscore one wedge wedge e q x underscore k y underscore k right arrow a x underscore one x underscore k equiv a y underscore one y underscore k display style wedge wedge x one x m y one x m e q x one y one e q x M Y M Z X one X M Z Y one Y M Display style for all X underscore one X underscore M Y underscore one X underscore M E Q X underscore one Y underscore one wedge Wedge E Q X underscore M Y underscore M right arrow Z X underscore one X underscore M equiv Z Y underscore one Y underscore M Display style wedge Phi Display style var phi here a z display style a z denote the predicates appearing in phi with k m display style k m their respective arities, and phi is the formula phi with all occurrences of equality replaced with the new predicate eq. If this new formula is refutable, the original phi was as well, the same is true of satisfiability, since we may take a quotient of satisfying model of the new formula by the equivalence relation representing eq. This quotient is well defined with respect to the other predicates, and therefore will satisfy the original formula phi. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Extension to countable sets of formulas. Gödel also considered the case where there are a countably infinite collection of formulas. Using the same reductions as above, he was able to consider only those cases where each formula is of degree 1 and contains no uses of equality. For a countable collection of formulas, phi i display style phi caret i of degree 1, we may define b k i Display style b underscore k caret i as above. Then define d k display style d underscore k to be the closure of b one one b k one b one K B K K Display style B underscore one carrot one B underscore K carrot one B underscore one carrot K B underscore K carrot K 
The remainder of the proof then went through as before. Topic: <inaudible> Extension to arbitrary sets of formulas. When there is an uncountably infinite collection of formulas, the axiom of choice or at least some weak form of it is needed. Using the full AC, one can well order the formulas, and prove the uncountable case with the same argument as the countable one, except with transfinite induction. Other approaches can be used to prove that the completeness theorem in this case is equivalent to the Boolean prime ideal theorem, a weak form of AC.